Many people consider Mauritania to be one of the most slavery-smitten countries in the world. A big sign that slavery and other forms of human trafficking in Mauritania have been deeply disregarded by the government is that slavery only became a crime in 2009, according to the Global Slavery Index. Only one slave owner has ever been successfully prosecuted, only receiving the measly six months of prison, in a country where an estimate of about 680,000 people are stuck in forced labor, according to CNN. The prevalence rate of slavery in Mauritania is excessively high. It reaches a seventh place out of 167 other countries, according to the Global Index Rank. Mauritania is even ranked as a Tier 3 by the U.S. Department of State, which means that the government does not meet the minimum standards to fight slavery and does not attempt to. In fact, more anti-slavery activists have been imprisoned than slave owners, according to the International Labour Organization. It's 13 versus 1. This is very much due to corrupt officials. Slavery is much caused and blamed on by the caste system, a system rooted deep in Mauritania's history, according to CNN. Slavery is defined by the ethnicity of the people. The white and black Moors are usually slave owners, and the Afro-Mauritanians and Heritines are almost always slaves. It is unfortunately quite the same today, since much of Mauritania still feels like living in the Middle Ages, according to CNN. 20,000 people are stuck in forced labor, out of which 43% are stuck in construction and 42% in domestic work, according to Global Slavery Index. In addition, 53% of the country, that is 23,000 people, are victims of forced marriages which includes torturous treatment in order to prepare the children for marriage. One of these being Le Blanc, where girls and women are force-fed extreme amounts of fatty food in order to become fat. This will make her seem more prestigious and rich, and the family will earn a bigger dowry. This is, in fact, a form of slavery. Several NGOs have set up different centers and societies in order to be there for anyone who wants to take the initiative to become free. The most prominent NGO is SOS Esclave, a local organization created by an unlikely pair, a past slave owner and a past slave. These two men make sure to be there for any call from help coming from the slaves themselves. One such case is a case of Mulkier Mintyarba a past slave, according to CNN. She was born and raised in captivity, where she was regularly tortured and raped by her master. She had five children in total, all of them results of her master's rape. One of her babies was put outside in the sun, where it died, dried up, and was eaten by ants, a form of punishing her and making sure that she would work more. She had to bury it in a shallow grave that she dug with her own hands. She said, I felt like an animal. She usually did domestic work, and after many years of slavery, she finally decided to break free. To break free from the chains of slavery in Mauritania, it does not only take physical work, but even more mental. Mulkir is just one of the 680,000 people. But humanity is used to fighting for themselves, and I really do believe that one day Mauritania will stand free. This can be reached by spreading awareness, donating money to successful organizations such as the Abolition Institute or the Polaris Institute, for example, and encouraging the education of people all around the world.